made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. Okay, if you've made it this far, you've gone through step one, you've gone through step two, or you're just finding this video to learn about step three, here we go. Really, this is another huge form of faith, of trust, of belief that if you follow these steps in a way that's meaningful and honest to you, your life will and can change. So let's get into it. We're here to read step three from Marijuana Anonymous, the Life with Hope book. This book has an incredible amount of wisdom and insight for people struggling with weed addiction, cannabis addiction, marijuana addiction, dope, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to start reading and we'll go from there. Okay. So step three called us into action for it was only by action that self will could be removed. Our inability to surrender had always blocked the effective entry of a higher power into our lives. Willingness was the lever with which we moved this obstruction. When we took this step, we were practicing the principle of faith. Interesting. So part of when I sobered up, this idea of God, this word God, made me want to vomit in my mouth. And now that was because of my own issues, my understanding of what this word God meant. I attached it to the traditional Judeo-Christian Abrahamic religious understanding of God. And it took me years to get over that because I had such a fear or such a big ego defense against anything beyond the confines of my egoic, self-centered mind. So to me, the simplest way to incorporate this idea of God or a higher power in the beginning in particular is simply it is not your egoic, self-centered will. That's what's keeping you suffering. That's what's keeping you from opening up to the wonders of the universe, to this idea of a higher power, to the interconnected beingness of the universe. That's what we're trying to connect to here, okay? That's what we are trying to allow into our lives. Step three asked us to make a decision based upon our acceptance of our addiction and powerlessness that we had identified in steps one and two. Before, we alternated between being controlling or controlled. We either drove other people away with our self-centeredness, demanding that others react to our plans and schemes as we would have them react. Or we resigned from the world by refusing to make decisions for ourselves. In either extreme, it was selfishness that ran our lives. Whew, a lot there as well. I think the thread that I'm going to keep pulling on today is this self-centeredness, this selfishness, this me, myself, mine, I know what's right, I'm going to hide, or I'm going to try to control the outcome of this situation. And all of that is the pathology of addiction. All of that is my desire to control things so I don't have to feel uncomfortable. So can we start to see that in ourselves and let go perhaps, or allow in the presence of this eternal beingness or God or higher power? It's called so many different things across cultures and religions and traditions. The Tao, okay? Whatever word works for you, the point is that you let go of your self-centered perspective and you open up and become willing to allow something else in. Our intoxicated way of life had made things worse. We did whatever we could to make other people, places, and things be what we wanted. When this proved to be impossible, we would be hurt and blame others for our problems. So we tried even harder to control and consequently suffered even more. 
We were actually quite uncaring, although we usually did not consider ourselves to be so. Why not decide to put our lives in the care of God as we understood God? Our way had certainly not worked for us. Beautiful. Another just jab at this. You are selfish and self-centered, and that is destroying your life. And that is the pathology of addiction. That's the disease of addiction. We did whatever we could to control people, places, and things. And when things didn't go our way, we rarely, if ever, took responsibility for those things or took responsibility for our part in it. So we're chipping away and we're smashing the self-centered ego and we're slowly letting go and realizing that freedom, serenity, peace, recovery, the life you've always wanted is waiting for you if you can let go and open up. The program of recovery works both for people who do not believe in God and for people who do. It does not work for people who think they are God. Wow, what a wonderful sentence. It does not work for people who think they are God. Spiritual awakening is not possible for those who remain dishonest, close-minded, and unwilling. Intolerance, belligerence, and denial keep us from open-minded investigation. For addicts, the consequences of these attitudes are dangerous. Amazing. Okay, this is another description of how our intellectual thinking mind separates us from this interconnectedness of the universe, of other beings, of conscious awareness. So again, reflecting on how is your thinking mind getting in the way of you and the person that you want to become. The third step does not say we turned our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. It says we made a decision to do so. That's huge. We didn't turn it all over perfectly or all at once. We made a decision What an accomplishment this was. We made a decision. It was not made for us by marijuana, our families, a probation officer, judge, therapist, or doctor. We made it ourselves. We made a decision to have faith and began putting our trust in a power greater than ourselves. Step three was neither another assertion of our willpower nor another resignation from responsibility. It was a decision. How much in your life of addiction and your torment and your pain have you struggled with making decisions? Or where you come up with all these stories and fantasies and lies and bullshit in your head, you tell yourself, tomorrow I'm going to do this, tomorrow I'm going to do that, I'm going to stop, I'm going to do this, but you never actually do anything. If you can take this leap and make this shift, I promise you will will learn how to make decisions that serve you, your life, and the life that you want to have. So it doesn't say it all happens at once. It just makes a, it says that we just make a decision to move forward. How were we going to believe that God could care for us? How could we learn to live without self-will and obsession? We were taught that a little willingness goes a long way toward building faith. Most of us resisted. We tried to understand this step before we made the decision to have faith and act upon it. We then found that simply making this decision opened us up to a spiritual connection and was an act of faith in and of itself. What we choose to do was to let go and let a caring God into our lives. God is just not your self-will. Okay, it can be anything. One acronym that's often used in the recovery world is good orderly direction. Maybe that works for you. Step three was a decision not only to have faith, but also to live by faith. Our lives had been centered around marijuana getting it and staying high. 
We found that by deciding to turn our will and lives over to the care of God, as we each understood God, our lives and the responsible use of our freedom to choose were returned to us. Oh, so beautiful. Our lives and the responsible use of our freedom to choose were returned to us. This idea of making a decision and having a bit more autonomy over your life is so huge. And I wish and I hope that this comes to you or that you develop this and you move in this direction. No doubt, 11 years ago when I sobered up, I was a fucking disaster. I couldn't make decisions. I was kind of at the whim of life. And over the years, I slowly learned to make decisions and act in alignment with what was best for me and the people around me, in alliance or in relationship with this higher power for me. And that over these years has led to me doing this video with you, one, but also to cultivating and developing a beautiful life that I am fortunate to live. And that happened because of all the people that I allowed to help me, that I asked for help, that I listened to, that I appreciated and that I trusted. And that's helped bring me to this point today. And I wish that for you. So I will keep reading. For many of us, that decision was followed with a prayer to our higher power, similar to this one. Higher power, I have tried to control the uncontrollable for far too long. I ask that you take this burden from me. I acknowledge that my life is unmanageable. I ask for your care and guidance. Grant me honesty, courage, humility, and serenity to face that which keeps me from you and others. I give this life to you to do as you will. The way that I find that works in my life today and perhaps ever since I started practicing this is if I am having, if I'm stressed or if I'm triggered or I'm angry, I'm ah, having a hard time with something. The short form, the shortcut to this prayer or this principle for me is thy will, not mine be done. And that is simply, can I let go of my self-centered egoic reaction to act impulsively or to act in a way that's not aligned with the higher good, the greater good, with an ethical way of being. So do I say that mean thing to somebody? Do I send that angry email? Do I jump in front of a line in front of someone else when clearly it probably wasn't my turn? Or can I sit and breathe and pause, let go of my self-will, Ask God, the universe, higher power, etc., for help. Allow that in. And ideally, hopefully, I will make a decision that's just better. Simply better. Less suffering, more joy, more well-being. Okay. If at all possible, we took this step with our sponsor, a spiritual advisor, or someone else we trusted. If we could find no one to share this with, then we prayed earnestly to our higher power. It was the beginning of learning how to turn it over and to let go and let God. Both well-known 12-step sayings. By starting to trust our higher power, we cleared the way for growth and recovery. Now we no longer have to rely on the weak force of self-will to solve our problems. Faith and acceptance are our new solutions. The power of faith gives our lives a new direction. Learning to live by faith took practice. It opened the way to a new reliance on a higher power and the restoration of our inner wisdom. The turning point for us was the decision to relinquish control. However, no matter how sincere our efforts, we do make mistakes. Then we admit our humanity and try again. A couple thoughts on that, which are helpful for me, okay, is that the sort of pushback that comes from the ego, that self-centered will, is sort of, I'm powerful, 
If I say my will is troublesome and I turn it over to God, that means I'm weak. That means I'm pathetic. I'm not able to do anything. And again, that's just the disease. That's your ego. That's your excuses. That's your bullshit mind coming up with reasons why you don't need to change. It's protecting you, trying to. And how's that going for you? How is this stubborn, egoic, I know everything mind doing for you. Is that helping you? Is that making your life better? I'd be curious to know. Chances are it's probably not. And you might be having a hard time letting it go. Again, this higher power idea can simply be the mysteries of the universe, the unknown. It just doesn't have to be our societal interpretation of God, okay? It can be whatever you need to make it be so that you can let go and let God, as they say. A very famous uh, meditation teacher, philosopher, and staunch atheist, Sam Harris. He's amazing. If you don't know who he is, I certainly uh, encourage you to check him out, Sam Harris. I was listening to one of his talks and someone in the audience came up and sort of asked him about the step three in the 12 steps and how how an an atheist would work through this. And I was amazed by the answer that Sam gave. And the answer was, this isn't a problem for him at all because this idea of God or higher power is simply the wonder of being, the wonder of consciousness, the wonder of the unknown. And that's not what I expected to hear from an atheist, staunch anti-religious atheist. So take that for what you will. It's actually quite an amazing uh, reminder that this is open to anybody. You don't have to believe anything. You just have to stop believing that you know the answers and open yourself up to the unknown, to something other than your self-centered ego. Having made the decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of our higher power, it was time to implement the decision. We had to look at exactly what it was that we decided to turn over. We needed to discover and examine the patterns and conditions of our lives. Moreover, we needed to rediscover what in our lives made us believe in ourselves and acknowledge gratitude for the people who had made our lives better. It was time for step four. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Please like, comment, share this video. Get in touch with me if you have questions. And if you've gotten this far, it only gets better from here. Okay, it's a beautiful process. This is a spiritual awakening, but it's a process. It doesn't necessarily just happen like that. And now step four is where we really dig deep. We dig deep and we pull out the skeletons the, the Jordan Petersons, the Carl Jungians of the world would call this shadow work. And I tell you, Carl Jung has nothing on step four in AA. Although he did consult on the construction of these steps, which is quite fascinating. Anyhow, I hope you continue to join me. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Peace. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.